Welcome everyone to another um, episode of BB Book Buzz, and this week we are doing our annual fireside chats, which is when uh, BB's reference librarians uh, come together to give you suggestions for things that can uh, keep you amused and warm during the cold winter months. Um, I have with me today, oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jeff Klapes, the head of the reference department, and with me today we have the rest of the reference staff, Karen Stern, um, Alyssa Staples, and Beth Ratcliffe. And the point behind um, this particular kind of program, you may have been following our, our monthly programs where we do a half hour book buzz uh, talk of current things that we're reading on WCAT. This month we're doing something a little bit different, which is our annual uh, fireside chat, where instead of just talking about whatever we're reading, we actually do have prepared themed lists uh, that we hope will cover a variety mm -hmm. of different kinds of um, interests that people may have. We also will be continuing uh, the companion program that we've done for several years now, which is called Beach Reads. That's when we tell you what um, kinds of suggestions we might recommend for you during the summer months, and we'll be doing that probably in June or so. Um, and in the meantime, uh, once a month, we'll be doing an episode like this. Um, just so you know, all of the lists that we are talking about today are available on our website at www.wakefieldlibrary.org. And we will also have paper copies of the lists available for anyone who wants them, as well as a display of the books um, to choose from at the library. So we hope we'll come down and um, take a look at that. And one final mention that I just want to call to your attention in case you didn't already know, uh, you may notice the absence of our uh, fiction queen, yes. uh, Leanne Ellis, who you may know retired recently um, just a couple of weeks ago after over 20 years of service uh, with BB Library. But she did leave us and you with a parting gift, so she has some of her annual lists as well, and we're including them with the display um, that we have at the <laughs> library so that you can hear some of her suggestions too. Um, so without further ado, why don't we go into our suggestions for the year. Alyssa, why don't you start? What are you going to sure, yeah. talk about? Uh, so what I'm talking about today, uh, the specific <coughs> book I'm talking about is called The Power by Naomi Alderman. Uh, but I do want to just uh, highlight quickly that the list that I'm going to provide everyone with um, is, uh, they're my recommendations for fiction you may have overlooked in 2017. Mm. So it's not specifically a best of, but it includes a lot of books that were involved in many people's best of lists this year, but they weren't necessarily bestsellers. So things that might have flown under the radar. Exactly, that kind of yes. Thing, yeah. So it includes a couple of debuts by authors you may not have heard of yet. Um, it includes a couple of short story collections, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> which if you're not a short story reader, I definitely would urge you mm -hmm. to give them a try this year. They're, it's actually my, my favorite to read. Um, so I hope the list kind of serves to broaden some readers' horizons or helps them get out of their comfort zone a little bit. Um, so back to The Power. Um, so again, it's by Naomi Alderman, and it was super well received this year. It actually won the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction in 2017. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting book that basically asks the question, what would happen if women's bodies became deadly weapons. <laughs> yeah, okay. so it's kind of a heavy topic. Uh, so basically the premise is that one day young women start developing electricity within their bodies. So Whoa, it's like superpowers almost? It, it is a little bit on the superhuman level. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of ground it in some brief scientific terms to mm -hmm. make it a little bit more believable. Mm -hmm. um, but Basically, this, this electricity within them can control other human bodies, it can hurt other humans, and it can ultimately even kill Whoa. other human beings. So not something to take very lightly. Um, it's so that you can understand how a society in which young women and, in, and some older women as well have this power would kind of all of a sudden upset kind of the patriarchal yeah. society. The whole social order. Yeah. Yeah. The whole social order that yeah. we live in. Um, which, it's an interesting concept to think of right now because I think it has a lot of cultural relevancy. Um, yeah. We've got the Me Too movement happening, the Time's Up initiative happening in Hollywood. I mean, basically, patriar 
patriarchy and systemic oppression of women is the conversation we're having right now. Um, so it's a really, it would be a really interesting book to do for, I think, a discussion group at yeah. the moment, if you can get your hands on it, because it's it's in demand right now. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's a slightly outlandish concept, but the author does use like a framing device. At, it, it's a research paper written in the distant future, so it kind of it grounds oh, cool. it a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's I think it's a really effective sounds, device. Hmm. Right. Would, would you call it speculative fiction I along would. the lines of some of it, those other big sounds authors? Like Margaret Atwood. Margaret it Atwood. does. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a lot like Margaret Atwood, and that's huge right now, too. Yeah, if you've read um, The Handmaid's Tale, yeah. this might be something, in, or we've seen The Handmaid's Tale on right. TV. Right, a lot of people like, are watching mm -hmm. the series, mm -hmm. and that's a wonderful book on its own. But it's funny you mentioned that because Alderman <clears> um, and Atwood actually kind of were in a mentorship together in 2013. Oh, really? oh. Right, so Margaret Atwood mentored Naomi Alderman. They were paired. So this was cool. before Alderman started working on this book, but they... Uh, so maybe she was inspired. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. definitely an inspiration for this. So if if that's something you're interested in, I, this is an easy jump over. Uh, the other book that I was going to mention that's like that is um, Doris Lessing's book, The Cl The Cleft. That's also a, a flipped society. Okay, that right. that could segue onto that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, so if you if you're into that kind of concept, this particular book is told through four different point of views. Um, so there are three women and one man, and it does span religions and countries and races, so it kind of, wow. it's, mm. it hits, it tries to get oh, as wide a reach as possible with this concept. Sounds um, great. Yeah, it's really great. I definitely want to put that one on my list. Yeah. <laughs> and you I said this was the first it. novel for her? No, no, oh. this one isn't a debut. Though the list, okay. my list does include some, but no. But this isn't um, a... No, this is just her newest and and I think her best. So I, I would was, I was thinking, like, can you imagine for a first author to work with Margaret Atwood? I know, yeah. oh my God. But yeah. even so, but even so, so, it's a dream. What, yeah. what an amazing Absolutely. opportunity to... Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Cool. Great. Thanks. So you mentioned Lessing. Is that something that was on your list? No, or? I actually, I mean, Lessing, I, doing the exact opposite because I'm talking about on my list books that have either just come out this week or books that are going to come out in the following months from now. So they're up and coming. Are these fiction um, or nonfiction? I'm sorry, they are all fiction. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and the first one I want to talk about, I'm going to mention three. The first one I want to talk about is um, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. And this has gotten a lot of press. It's really hot right now, mm -hmm. and deservedly so. Mm -hmm. And the title may give you a little clue because it's sort of like the girl on the train, uh, Gone Girl. It's yeah. it's in that vein. It's a it's a right. thriller type. Woman of the Lake. Woman of the Lake. <laughs> right. <laughs> Girls and the women. So in this one, she is a recluse. She's agoraphobic. She doesn't go out of the house. She's so like spends. the women in Cabin Ten. <laughs> exactly. That's right. They just keep on coming. This is fun. <laughs> We've got lots of thrillers women to ride in places, on. Right, yeah. <laughs> But no electrical charges. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I got it covered. So she spends her time drinking wine, watching Hitchcock movies and neo noir mil movies, and spying on her neighbors. Good. So mm. spying <laughs> on her neighbors. So that's like one of the movies she watches. She watches Rear Window mm. by Hitchcock. Oh, okay. And she sees a crime committed through her window. But has she really seen it? She's on, she's drinking all this wine. She's popping pills, too. Oh. So has she really seen it, or is she hallucinating? So an unreliable narrator. An yeah. unreliable narrator. We exactly. had to say that. Leanne's we had to, favorite. Leanne's favorite. Exactly. We had to say Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, I wanted to quote from another movie, um, Betty Davis and All About Eve. Mm. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. All right. <laughs> That's the cool. first one. The second one I wanted to mention is um, Lauren Goff. She's written a couple of other novels. This is going to be her third. It's called Florida. The other two take place in upstate New York. And the first one, The Monsters of Templeton, it's a woman who's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. reading that. That's, I was trying to remember which yes, one of hers yes. I had read. That's a great book. The woman book. who, she's searching <laughs> for the identity of her father. Mm. And she has to do research in, his, in history to do that. And so it's part historical, it's part fiction. Well, it's all fiction, I'm sorry. It's part mystery. And then there's just a little smidgen of supernatural. More 
an essence there, mm. not a metaphor, not real supernatural. Mm. And mm. then the second one is Arcadia. And this is part of what I like about God. Oh, I read God. that one too. <laughs> <laughs> so well read. I did. And I didn't even it, know it. Right? The thing about it is that she writes totally different, different topics. Very, very different topics. Yeah. So Arcadia is about, uh, an upstate New York again, but it's about a little boy growing up on a commune. So he's very mm. isolated. And then it goes up to the future, to now actually, where a pandemic has hit, a flu pandemic worldwide. Oh. So the ones isolated in this commune have a little bit better chance, but it's all of his journey through that. Oh, mm. that sounds great. Her third book you will like because it's short stories. Okay. Actually, she's written another collection of short stories. So this but is still that's a, that is wide ranging. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and these are all about Florida. They all take place in Florida. Oh, that's nice and warm. Yes, <laughs> good for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they have different characters, <coughs> different themes different um, set, well, they're all in Florida, but they take place in different towns, Florida. But Florida is also a character. It's the climate. It's the, um, the ambiance, mm -hmm. all Florida. Mm -hmm. So th mm -hmm. that's really going to be, I think, fascinating. Um, did you have a question? No. OK, because my last book okay. um, is another mystery book. It's. Um, takes place, this one takes place in Australia, so that was really fun. And it's by uh, Jane Harper. Mm -hmm. It's called The Dry. The Dry. The Dry. Mm -hmm. And it's about, it, it's part of a series. I don't know how many she's going to do in the series, but the first in the series takes place outside of Melbourne. And it's detective, he's the Australian federal detective and usually he's following a monetary trail, he's financial mm. crime, but he goes back to his childhood home to attend the funeral of his best friend growing up. Turns out he was involved in a murder-suicide, and he's drawn into the investigation. Mm. She does a great job of the landscape again. She shows you how dry it is, how desolate, how isolated, how thirsty. <laughs> um, and then the second one that she's coming out with, which is Force of Nature, it's all going to be different because it takes place in the mountains in Australia. Austria, Australia I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's going to be damp and lush and oh, wet. Oh, that's interesting. And mountainous. Dry, wet. Okay. Exactly. I see. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's the upcoming one that we're that's talking the about. Upcoming that's one. The, the that, that's going to be published in February. <laughs> right. So you're going to have to wait a little while for that. But, but you can start with the dry, the dry now and then yeah. go to the. Yeah. So I'm. Exactly. What was the new one called? <laughs> the new one's called Force of Nature. Force of Nature. Okay. The first one is the dry. Got it. The other thing about that one is that it's been optioned by um, Reese Witherspoon. So oh, okay. it might be coming out in a movie, and which is also true for the other one, the the, the woman in the window. Yes, that's been optioned by Fox. That. Mm. So that's coming up. We may get to go to the movies and see yeah. these two. Read them first. Great. You've heard it here <laughs> first. Yes. But they both take place in Australia, just different parts of. For Jane Harper's books. For Harper's they, books. They're not even, I think, that far apart. They're all mm. near Australia, near <laughs> Melbourne. Near Melbourne. But, but that very such different, different environments. environments exist so close mm. to each other, I didn't yeah. realize that. And is it going to be this? Uh, are they really a series where I don't, they'll she be following the same stories? Or? It's the same detective. She hasn't said whether she's going to do any more than this. And let me just tell you, the, the force of nature is a different premise because it's five women who go out alone on a corporate retreat to build bonds. Mm -hmm. But only four of them come back, mm -hmm. and they're all <coughs> bloody and injured. So, totally different story, wow. but still a mystery that Aaron Falk is going to solve. So I I'm hoping she comes out with a whole bunch more. But yeah. she are, are they said. pacey? Or I mean, is it a page? They're turn? not like um, Woman in the Window, right? They're a little but bit they're still very much plot-driven, yeah. very compelling. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Nice character development. Great. Good. Cool. Karen? Karen, what do you got? Me. I have, um, my list is called American Perspectives, and I kind of, it kind of came about because I was interested in reading about lives in this country that were not like 
mine, um, not my sort of white middle class life. Um, and so it's both fiction and nonfiction. So you're going to get, there's some memoirs on there. Um, actually, one that I talked about before, Sherman Alexie's Don't, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me is on there. Mm -hmm. um, there's Mary Matsuda Grunewald's um, Looking Like the Enemy, which is a first person account of the Japanese internment camps in World War II. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's also Hillbilly Elegy, which mm -hmm. is very popular right yeah. now. Still. Um,